Hey everyone, it is May 7th. Today is day nine for me, I believe. Um, I wanted to break down some terminology, the difference between dependence, codependence, independence, and interdependence, because some of these terms get thrown around a lot, but they're not really being used properly. So there's like a hierarchy. Now, if you've ever read The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, then you already know. And <clears throat> dependence is the lowest. He doesn't go into codependence, but I'm gonna throw that one in for today because I want people to understand. Codependence is not dependence. And a lot of people confuse this one. So first of all, what is dependence? Dependence is when you are relying on someone else or something else to get your needs met. Obviously children are dependent on their parents or their caregivers for their well-being. Um, you know, they, they don't go to work, so they don't make money, they don't earn a living. So they're dependent on their parents to take care of their survival needs. Um, if I broke a leg, I would be dependent on crutches to get around. So it's this idea that, that I need something to enable me or someone to enable me. I can't do it on my own, okay? Um, as an adult, a, a dependent might be someone who can't make enough money on his or her own, so they're dependent on a roommate or dependent on a partner to to get by because they don't have enough um, earning power on their own. Okay, so that's dependent. Codependent is a survival mechanism that is learned early on in age. It's on the opposite end of the narcissistic spectrum, uh, even though it can be equally as manipulative. Codependence is this idea that like, I have to survive. And in order to survive, it's actually like if you've ever been an Alcoholics Anonymous, I think they talk about this a lot, uh, because you get used to walking on eggshells, right, with, with the alcoholic and, um, or I should say Al-Anon. al is probably where you would hear this discussion. You have to walk on eggshells or tiptoe around the alcoholic so that way you don't wake the beast or um, throw them off or make them mad or ruffle their feathers. So codependence is the idea that like, I'm gonna make sure that my environment is okay, and that those in my environment are okay, so that I can be safe. Um, because codependents generally as a rule do not like um, confrontation. So they're gonna do whatever they need to do to manage their environment. And sometimes they, like I said, they can be very manipulative. Um, because they really want to make sure that like 10 steps down the road, they're not going to have a fight with you. So they'll sometimes do the math unconsciously to figure out how to make the environment just right. Whether it's, you know, um, daddy hates it when uh, the house is a mess. So let's make sure the house is clean for daddy. Um, you know, my, my, my girlfriend hates it when I do X, Y, and Z, so let me make sure she doesn't find out about it because I don't want to get in a fight with her. I don't want to deal with her wrath. That's codependence. And I think a good example of like the manipulation part of it can be that codependents are also terrified of um, abandonment. So a lot of times when I say they're manipulative and they go to that 10th step, to ensure their survival. Really what they're doing is they're trying to protect themselves from being abandoned. So they, they actually control as much as they possibly can um, getting things uh, where they think they need to be so that way this potential individual won't abandon them. Um, I had a friend probably like 10 years ago and she was very codependent and very manipulative codependent where she would learn everything she possibly could about me so that she could like, oh, this girl likes turkey burgers and oh, this girl likes yoga and oh, her favorite brand at the time it was Frankie B. And she would do everything she possibly could to get to know everything about me. So that way she could kind of create this connection with me that would almost supersede any potential of me going, hey, I don't like this. And 
it was so suffocating. It was, and I, I don't do well with like with those kind of relationships and it was so suffocating and I felt so controlled by it, by her, the, her need to try to get to know me so well that I, I left anyway. And she was like, how could you do this to me? Um, I always go to the yoga class you like with you and I love to make you the food that you like and invite you over. And it was like, I never asked you to do any of that, right? So codependents will do that. They'll go out of their way to try to manage the reality to such an extreme that you won't want to abandon it. So that's like on the far end of the spectrum. Mild codependence is simply just, I'm going to do whatever I can to not upset this person so they don't have to deal with confrontation because I need to be safe. Independence. So independence is where we can do everything on our own. You don't need help. Um, in fact, I think one of the best examples of financial independence, and this also comes from Covey's book, it's such a great book, like it's one of my lifelong staples, is, you know, not having money. Having money is not financial independence. Financial independence is having the capacity to generate money at any given time. That's financial independence. So it's not having the resources, it's having the capacity to generate the resources. So independence is the ability to do whatever you possibly need and, 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 and take care of from this autonomous place. You're not dependent, you're not relying on anything. Even someone who say comes from an industry, let's say right now they, they're subject to the shutdown and the industry is closing down, so their business is closing down. An independent person would say, no problem, I'm gonna go reinvent myself over here because that's not shut down and be independent in that way. They're not gonna be dependent on the government, they're not gonna be dependent on the clientele or the consumer that is now shut down. They are gonna just switch gears and move someplace where they can continue to operate autonomously. So that's independence, all right? Interdependence is where you take one or more independent individuals and you create almost like a synergy. So no longer are you kind of borrowing from each other. You're literally saying, you know what? I'm really good at finances and you're really good at communication. And this person over here, you know, they really just, they, 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 they get kind of the, the back end of, of, of uh, technology when it comes to putting, uh, how's it called? Um, a website together and everything that we need from the marketing standpoint. So we're gonna take these individuals who are independent in their own right, bring them together and create a system of synergy where now we all can benefit on a grand scale. That's interdependence, okay? And actually our world is interdependent. Um, you know, the, what is it like the, the cockroach eats the ant, and then you've got the rodents who eat the cockroaches, and then you've got like this chain, right? And then you get higher and higher up on this. It's like everything is really and truly interdependent. Um, so by being able to operate at my max independently, I can come together with something else and then create something bigger. And, um, you know, so life, the ecosystem, our, everything in our world has this beautiful way of functioning and cycling based on the fact that as autonomous beings, we can create this major, amazing experience called our world and life. So that would be interdependence. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's it. I just wanted to go over like those different, um, you know, words, break them down, give some better definitions. You can't jump from dependence to interdependence. You gotta go through independence, okay, to get there. Um, it's really important to learn how to do things on your own before you can really create something on a grander scale. And a lot of people struggle with that independent piece, whether it's being single um, for a long period of time, whether it's starting a business and just going at it solo, um, whatever it may be. A lot of people struggle with the independent piece more than anything. And they try to borrow, they try to jump 
if they try to create big things when they really don't even have their own shit together. <laughs> so if you want to create a really amazing system or experience or contribution to the world, you got to go with your independence to get there. Um, otherwise, your, your weakness will be revealed very quickly and I guarantee you'll be booted out of that system. So anyway, that's all. Just wanted to break down those terms, uh, give some examples for each, and that's it. Um, I hope you all guys, hope all of you guys have a great Thursday and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.